Melanie, in the last two podcasts, we've been talking about children in the Bible. The first podcast was about choosing a children's Bible that's appropriate for the child's age. And then last time was about teaching children to read the Bible on their own. Today, what we're going to be talking about is how to help our children apply the truths of the scripture. 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17 says, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Melanie, that's my prayer. I want my children to be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Mm -hmm. Let's dive into this subject. Welcome back to Parenting to Impress, your go-to podcast to learn practical ways to love God and love others, and impress this on the hearts of your children. I am your host, Heidi Franz, and I am joined by my dear friend, Melanie Simpson, two moms who have made a lot of mistakes, but have found grace and truth along the way. In this episode, we want to really get a clear picture of how we help our children take God's Word and move from just the things that they're reading and the things that they're learning to what does this mean then about my life? What does it matter to me? And the application of the Bible stories. Right. Yeah. In the preschool age, we learn what the Bible is. We learn that the Bible is true. We learn that the Bible is God's word to us. We learn that the Bible was written by men who were inspired by the Holy Spirit that these stories actually happened. And it's the facts of the Bible. That's my goal in the preschool years. We call it the foundational years for academics. I call it the foundational years for preschool as well. Yeah. It's important at this point that we are just continually reminding our kids that God is so good and he Mm -hmm. loves them so much. Mm -hmm. And that all of these things that we're reading about, they tell us more about who he is, his character, his attributes. Mm -hmm. And then we get to see how God's good for us comes out of that too, that when we are having a really hard time and we're being really, really mean to our sibling, God has a better way. Let's talk about God's better way. And we're not browbeating them with sin and gloom and doom, but we use the words, we talk about sin, but ultimately it's with the purpose of God has a better way. Right. So we're introducing the biblical words, the gospel, the good news, sin, disobedience, grace, mercy, and that is all occurring in these foundational times. One of the things that I see the pendulum has swung so far is that we have turned the Bible into an if then for preschoolers. If Jesus was kind to other people, then I. I need to be kind to other people. If Jonah disobeyed and bad things happen, then if I disobey, bad things will happen. And I think this is a very dangerous to turn the Bible into this moral if then book. Yeah, because you remove the heart, the heart motive, which that ultimately is what God cares about. You know, what's behind your actions. Now, I don't want to be speak unkindly because I don't think that the motive behind these curricula is wrong, but I think they have taken it, like you said, and oversimplified it in an effort to make it applicable for a pre schooler or a young child, they have kind of overstepped. What has occurred is we've taken the Bible and made it a morality book. Right. Now, I do feel that during these foundational years with these facts that we're teaching, that we need to take these facts and make them applicable to the world around them. Yeah. For example, you've been talking about Noah and the rainbow. When you see that rainbow, Talk about Noah's Ark Mm -hmm. and make that connection between those two. If the child is having a meltdown because he can't pick up his clothes. And by can't, you mean won't. Exactly. (laughs) We talk about Colossians 3.23, that we work at it with all our heart as working for the Lord. So we're helping the children see the Bible Mm -hmm. on a personal level, that connection. We're not starting on the application as much. Right. And that's just the first layer because 
if we don't start then with that first step, the disconnect between this ancient text Mm -hmm. and me, Mm -hmm. that's the first thread that gets tugged. And so we have to continually seek to remind our kids that no, just because this was written a really long time ago, doesn't mean that it doesn't count for my life now. Absolutely. Absolutely. So how do we then transition from preschool into the elementary years, Heidi? So in elementary years, that's where the application is starting to come. I want children to start looking at not just the facts, but the why and the how. After we read a Bible story, we're going to be discussing what did the different people in these stories do? Why did they do this? Do you think it was a good choice? Do you think it was a bad choice? What happened with their choices? How did God respond to those choices? And I love what you said, Heidi, about asking questions and taking it to the next level. If your kid gives a quote wrong answer, Mm -hmm. maybe ask, why do you think that? Or why would you do that? And sometimes letting it go, letting the kid marinate in it for a little bit, you'd be surprised then the next time it comes up, you'd be like, hey, remember last time we read this and you said this? Do you still think that? And just Mm -hmm. seeing what the Holy Spirit is doing in their life. If a child would say the wrong answer when it's a foundational question, we we want to point them back to the truth. But a lot of times if we'll take that time to figure out why they responded, then we can help Mm -hmm. with the confusion Mm -hmm. of the situation. Proverbs 22, 17 says, pay attention and turn your ear to the sayings of the wise. Apply your heart to what I teach. When we consider that scripture is meant to be something we enter into and we work with, it's not passive. Mm -hmm. I think the elementary years are when we begin to pass that baton of, hey, you actually have to show up. You have to do a little work here. This isn't just me reading it to you anymore, because this is where you begin to incorporate God's word into how you live your life, which is the application part. It's just important that they know that it's not just me saying this, God says this. Exactly. Very good point. The teen years is where I have seen the Bible stories really come to fruition. This is where the kids are living out what they have heard for so many years. One of my favorite questions to ask my kids is, what Bible story will apply to this situation you're in. Because it's very hard sometimes to take, as Melanie has said, this ancient text and see how it applies to 21st century activities. Mm -hmm. The Bible doesn't talk about cell phones. The Bible doesn't talk about texting. The Bible doesn't talk about cars. But yet, How does what the Bible talk about apply to texting and cell phones and cars and going out with friends and et cetera? Right. Proverbs 23, apply your heart to instruction and your ears to words of knowledge because God is concerned about our hearts. Mm -hmm. He's concerned about our heart motive. Why Mm -hmm. do we do the things we do? Mm -hmm. And as a believer, are you offering your heart motive, your brain, your intellect to the Lord to be transformed? Yes, God doesn't explicitly speak to my sending an inappropriate text to a girl, Mm -hmm. but God does talk about lust. And these are conversations that we can have with our kids, helping them understand the application for them today, Mm -hmm. taking those stories and making them relevant. This is a great time also to model when we have issues, when I personally have issues and I'm like, you know, I know that God speaks to this in his word, but for the life of me, I cannot come up with this. I'm going to sit down. I'm just going to get out my blue letter Bible app and I'm going to plug in the word greed and just see what God has to say about greed. And then just showing my kids that I have read the Bible a hundred times over, Mm -hmm. but I don't remember everything that it says and it's okay. And verses mean different things to you in different seasons of life. Mm -hmm. And that's the power of the word. And so helping kids look at even John 3, 16 The verse that many kids memorized early in their childhood, how does that apply when they're 10, Mm -hmm. 15, 20, Mm -hmm. and into adulthood? Yeah. 
So I think what really we're saying here is it is, as always, a foundational by foundational by foundation. So you just add step by step by Mm -hmm. step. You are at the very beginning spending a lot of time in the Word, talking about God, helping them see how God applies to their lives. But then you pass the baton. And now I'm asking you to think, what does this mean to me Mm -hmm. without mom involved? What is God saying to you directly? And then it just keep extricating yourself from that equation Mm -hmm. so that finally, by the time they're in their teen years, they are sitting with their Bibles, still asking questions. There's nothing, I mean, we all have questions, but ultimately that they are going to God's word first before they come to me. Mm, Yeah. One of the things that I have been working on with my teens as they leave the nest is not thinking for them thought about the process that I go through to make decisions and then walking them through that process as well. So in my mind, I'm automatically going, what does the Bible say? What is scripture or a Bible story that's going to point this topic out? How does this apply to this situation? And so I'm going through the questions in my mind that I would go through to answer and leading them yes. through those. Yeah, I love, Huddy, you have a blog post asking your kids, what do you think? So you can lead with that. What does God think about this? If you don't know, let's figure it out together. And then now that you know what God says, what do you think you should do with that information? Yeah, we'll post the link to that in the show notes. Yeah. Heidi, this has been a fun conversation as you and I just get to sit here and process how we helped our kids learn how to apply scripture. I would love for you to pray us out offering hope and encouragement for those who are listening as they begin, maybe for the first time, laying that foundational layer to help their own kids apply scripture. Dear God, I just thank you for this opportunity to just share that you are a good father, that you help us, that you do not leave us alone in this parenting journey. God, I pray that the Holy Spirit would just bring to mind some of these tips as we go about our parenting walk. God, I pray that we would have a deep desire to impress loving you and loving others on our children. God, I pray that our children's hearts would be open to what you have to teach them and that we would just be able to walk the walk by example of going to your word and seeing it as the ultimate source for all wisdom, for all understanding. God, we love you and we welcome you into our homes. In Jesus' name, amen. We want to thank you for listening to the Parenting to Impress podcast. Be sure to visit abcjesuslovesme.com and check out the show notes for more information on topics shared in this episode. Please subscribe and share with your friends.